Hey, everyone. Hey there. There we go. <clears throat> Apologies. I think I got my mic going now. Sorry, I was a little bit slow to get in there. Sorry for that. Um, okay, looking good. <clears throat> Apologies in advance, guys. I just have a, a little bit of coming off a, uh, a little bit of an illness there. So my voice sounds a little weird for those that are the usual listeners. Appreciate you guys for uh, joining in. Appreciate those that will hop in during the discussion. Today we have um, a Twitter space with the very awesome and very interesting Mode Layer 2. We have uh, James from Mode who's going to be chatting with us today. We'll go over um, a few things there. Obviously, I won't take the wind out of the sails already. Um, let's just go ahead and start right away with uh, James. Can you just tell us a bit about yourself and your background as well? Yeah, absolutely. So I've worked in the space since 2017. Um, initially, I started as an angel investor, focusing in on uh, financial applications of blockchains, um, mm -hmm. which uh, then became DeFi. And uh, through 2019, 2020, 2021, I was getting pretty deep into the DeFi space. Um, I had a small consultancy uh, where we managed um, LP positions across uh, different DeFi applications. And um, I was speaking to a lot of DeFi teams and they uh, had problems with uh, kind of growing uh, their user base, trying to understand uh, how to attract more liquidity, how to attract more traders, etc. Um, I worked with a team called Hashflow pretty closely um, for oh, a while. Cool. Um, and then, uh, yeah, during this time, like the consultancy kind of grew and I ended up selling it to Hype, which is the largest marketing agency in the space. Um, I joined Hype as managing director when I was there, helped grow it through uh, the bull market from um, 2021 to Recently, I just left a few months ago to work on Mode. Uh, during that time, I was super lucky to work with a lot of the largest projects in the space, helping them kind of define their uh, growth strategy, like their developer growth, ecosystem growth strategies, um, helping them think through like, how can they best attract talent to the network? Um, mm -hmm. What kind of incentive mechanisms can they build out? Uh, what kind of campaigns can they run? Um, so I work with projects like BNB Chain, Near, um, Algorand, Definity, more recently, cool. I, um, and lots of others. And uh, yeah, it's been a, it, it was a really exciting time. Um, but you know, after working with all these projects um, really closely, I started to see that there was a, you know, there was a big gap um, in what I thought was efficient resource allocation, and. I thought that, you know, I find DAO funding sometimes quite frustrating. Um, sometimes centralized companies can also be very frustrating to deal with. So I wanted yeah, to try to think about how can we, uh, how what would an ecosystem look like that can really incentivize people and reward people that grow the chain? So um, I started sketching out mode with a good friend of mine, Dimi, who is uh, the founder of Ocean Protocol. Um, and he kind of, yeah, we thought about like this sequence of fee sharing idea. We thought about ideas with like a referral network built into the chain. Um, and he introduced me to one of his partners, uh, or one of his developers he previously worked with. And yeah, together we started building out mode. That was around three, four months ago. And uh, yeah, here we are now. Things have, things have grown quite quickly. Yeah, that's that's very exciting, and it's you have a very colorful, like very like multi layered, I would say, uh, history so far with everyone that you mentioned that you work with. It's very interesting. Um, I, it's fun. It's fun. Your background kind of really does give uh, the whole, um, I guess, vibe of growth, right? At the end of the day, um, which is a big part of it. So um, it kind of it perfectly segues into the question when it comes to you know mode. If you could introduce you know, mode network to us, um, you know, in, in, your, in your, just your best form. Yeah, absolutely. So mode is an OP stack L2. So we are very similar to base um, optimism. And uh, okay. yeah, we've used the OP stack. Uh, we are the kind of main differentiators with mode is we um, have a sequence of fee sharing module built out. Uh, so this allows developers who deploy smart contracts on mode to earn fees for every transaction 
that goes through their smart contract. We have a uh, referral network built in. So if a user refers anyone else to mode, then um, they'll earn a proportion of their transaction fees. And we're also taking a uh, platform approach to ecosystem growth. Um, so we're building into mode a lot of the tooling that developers need to effectively grow their ecosystem. Um, and we're mm -hmm. trying to be a lot more involved with the application layer um, and the user layer, the user acquisition for applications than other chains. So I think a comparison to make here is a lot of chains view themselves as kind of like an AWS or a, a database, right? And yeah. their job is to go out and get as many people, you know, using it as possible. Um, and that just means telling everyone how great they are. It's like, hey, we're the fastest, <laughs> <Very true. laughs> we're the, you know, we're the easiest to deploy to. Um, we are, uh, I don't know, maybe we're the most scalable. Those are kind of mm -hmm. like the, the messages a lot of chains, um, you know, push. Whereas our focus is much more, and that's like similar to AWS, right? That's how they go out um, and get uh, companies to build on them. Whereas for us, it's, um, it's very much like we want to be more like the Shopify approach where we want to think about like what tooling do application developers need to grow. So that could be like they need um, accounting tooling. They need uh, some kind of security like protocol. They need, um, for example, help with getting their first 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 users. Um, so thinking about how we can integrate like galaxy into um exactly our process so that's that's very much like what we mean when we say we have a platform approach so would you say that um you know with the start of mode that was your main mission initially or did it kind of become that main mission along the way would you say so it's it was kind of our main mission because I've seen like a lot of the problems that projects face. So often mm -hmm. like I work with an L1 or an L2 and they would then say like, okay, we've got this application. It's a really big app for us. We also want you to help them grow. Um, so I definitely did kind of understand some issues that applications have as well, but it's been yeah. quite interesting to see um, as I've spoken to hundreds of developers over the last few months about like what support they need and you know what would make them deploy to mode and um it's been interesting there's been a few like surprises uh what would be some examples um that you would say you guys have that would go sort of like above and beyond to help attract those developers or give them what they need yeah so we tr we're also trying to like be scalable with it right so yeah we are, tr we are trying to go like above and beyond for like the early applications in the ecosystem. Um, so for example, there's an exchange which just launched uh, on our test net called Kizuna, uh, really talented yeah. team. Um, and, you know, they wanted some support with uh, getting the company, the operations, all of that set up. So, um, you know, we've done that for them. Um, there has been some game developers who have been a, uh, yeah, building out some interesting stuff. And one of their main issues uh, was that they find it really hard to um, make sure that the game is secure and essentially stop people from cheating. So what kind of identity protocols could we like help them deploy um, to essentially you know, know like when there's real people playing versus when there's bots? Um, and if there is bots playing, um, yeah, ensuring that like the bots aren't cheating. So, uh, yeah, we've nice. like, got some of our security auditors to, like, help out and try and uh, figure out different systems we can deploy. Maybe that's, like, an attestation system. Maybe it's an on-chain identity system. Um, so things like that. But, yeah, it has been really interesting. Like, most developers I speak to, um, most projects I speak to at the moment, their main issue is definitely, like, growth, right? We're mm -hmm. in a, a stage that's what of we found as well. Yeah, we're in a stage of the market where there aren't many uh, users. Well there, are, well, there are users, but, you know, there's less than there was previously. It's so, very fragmented. Yeah, very fragmented across ecosystems. 
so that's really like uh the struggle and you know people like that we're not just telling them we have a better technology but we're trying to go through their growth challenges together and um design campaigns together uh to help them launch um so yeah if there's anyone listening who has an application then uh yeah feel free to to me (laughs) of course um, I really like that angle. Honestly, it, it aligns a lot with, um, you know, a lot of you know, how, how we come to be in, in what we do. Right. Um, and so I, I definitely think that's a, you know, a solid fit there for sure. And I, I agree. It's um, it was kind of the, the main thing that I noticed. And, and this is from, I guess, a different perspective than development, but the community perspective where you have, um, you know, someone with a product and you know users interested but no way to understand those users or see what those users are doing etc so you know we we can be that tool right and if you guys can be on that other side as well helping with that development and and everything like it's such a nice balance i feel and um, a lot of there's there's always i feel like that one missing piece that a project needs help with um mm-hmm. that will just kind of really push them past like the wall that a lot of people will hit right absolutely yeah and um it's often yeah, it's often tough to to find that. You know, if you're if you're folk, if you're like an extremely talented developer, um, then you know you can't be expected to know how to run like an incredible marketing campaign. So, um, yeah, it's also quite nice. Like we do have like a pretty technical team. Um, we have to, but we also have some really excellent uh, growth minds. Um, on the team were advising us so mm-hmm. it's really exciting to, to yeah to be talking to these you know applications that are going to deploy to mode every day designing campaigns for them um and really helping solve those challenges for them that is really cool that's as exciting to hear and so i know that obviously the goal is not to just say how we're better i think you've done a great job of um giving a lot of the finer details but if you don't mind giving us kind of some of the finer points on um, the benefits or the, the smaller detailed benefits of why to build on mode, what kind of stands out in that process, um, whether or not it's scalability, for example, et cetera. Yeah. So um, basically the main reason to build on mode is that you'll get sequence of fees, which uh, is a kind of ongoing funding mechanism. Like if your app uh, has users and those users are transacting, on your application, then you'll be earning proportion of those sequencer fees. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, we've seen sequencer fees are uh, can be quite significant um, projects uh, like like Base, CK Sync, um, Optimism, Arbitrum. They all mm-hmm. run sequences. A sequencer essentially sequences transactions. Um, it pay it, it like rolls up the transactions, uh, pays for the L1 gas, and there's an L2 transaction fee and there's usually profit there um and yeah we're giving that back to developers um we're also going to have kind of extra incentives uh for developers to yeah really push their applications on mode so we're very much focused on yeah like a i guess a cooperative way of thinking we want like all the kind of revenues from mode go back to the people that grow the chain um we're also uh, yeah, focused on giving grants for support um, for launching on mode and for getting your first you know, 1,000, 5,000, 10,000 users um, on the chain and looking at how we can help projects build out a sustainable growth engine. Um, so yeah, those are really the key things for developers. So the sequencer, the sequencer fee sharing, is that um, that would be the on-chain cooperative that's listed on the site, or is that something uh, more, is that, is that the finer details of it, or is there more to it than that? Um, so sequencer fee sharing is like just a module that we've built okay. and deployed to mode. Essentially, as a developer, you can register your contracts on mode um, by adding a function to your smart contracts. Uh, when you do this, you'll get an NFT sent to your wallet and that NFT will accrue transaction fees that run through the smart contracts you've registered and you'll be able to claim those every week. Okay. Awesome. No, that, that makes a lot more sense. Thank you. That, oh, that's very nice actually. Yeah. I have not seen um, this done before personally. So I'm, a, I'm not the most 
tech guy as well. So sometimes it's a bit tough for me, but um, I appreciate the explanation. Um, so for for this for this the on-chain cooperative, for example, and um, you know the idea of kind of sharing back to those that um, you know help to because it's applications and users that scale the mode blockchain, right? Um, mm -hmm. What what would be the best way right now for a user to get involved or to participate? So right now it would be um, by doing the campaigns on Galaxy. Uh, the last like focusing on like the last campaign we did was around uh, Dex Week. We've actually uh, continued that campaign, so that's currently open. We have two really great Dexes live. Um, one is called Kizuna. The other one is called Dexilla. You can grab some uh, Tesla ETH, like Sapoli ETH, um, and you can bridge that via the mode bridge. And uh, yeah, you can visit those DEXs, and make some swaps, earn some points on Galaxy. And uh, yeah, that's probably the best way to kind of experience um, mode at the moment. And whereas, as we kind of get closer to mainnet launch, mm -hmm. um, we're going to... Uh, yeah, start to have more kind of um, ways that users can, yeah, start to grow the network and there will be rewards for growing the network in the future. So so they'll definitely see more um, opportunities and, and things like campaigns, obviously, on Galaxy Arise over the next uh, little while. Do you, uh, I'm curious, and obviously you don't have to, if you can't, but is there, is there a date for um, mainnet, et cetera? So we're aiming for in around four weeks. Um, we still have quite a lot to test. Uh, we like the the DEXs. They were, actually the campaign went really well. We were we were pretty pleased with it. We had a, a lot more people swapping and like uh, testing than we expected. Um, but yeah, we still we still have some work. There's still some bugs. There's still uh, some things to fix. We also have a number of applications uh, that are looking to deploy. So um, we're trying to like line all that up right now. So yeah, the aim is for four weeks. For mainnet launch. Okay. Okay. Very exciting then. So, I mean, f f aiming for four weeks. I know, obviously, it's tough to uh, get to those points, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I think that's definitely very exciting to hear for users. And uh, as well, I did link below the latest campaign, guys. So, for everyone listening, make sure you guys go and, and check that out for sure because it's very fun stuff. I, I like these. Um, very like test related campaigns that go on. I think it's a really great way to just like get the user base involved. So pretty exciting stuff. And, um, you know, with that, obviously I just want to say, I uh, appreciate you guys taking the time to work with us. Um, you know, how has that process been for you from your perspective? Yeah, things have been good. Um, I think, yeah, initially, uh, you know, we, we move really fast. So we weren't taking advantage of all of the features. We were just like pushing yeah. as many campaigns as possible. Um, but yeah, it's been great to kind of continue the conversation. Um, we've, we caught up a couple of weeks ago with the, the team and um, mm -hmm. yeah, we went through more of like the features we can use, like giving, uh, giving away NFTs um, as an on-chain action, um, which is really nice. So we've started to do a lot more of that now. Um, and we're going to continue to do a lot more of that in the future. So, yeah, we're, we're really excited about that. Um, yeah, I think in general it's, it's been really great for us to, you know, get a boost uh, into the community. Um, we've got a lot of great feedback, which is really the main thing for the, the application team. So the DEX is 100%. a lot of great feedback. So, you know, my kind of... Um, thesis is that like you know applications they need to uh have like really fast iteration cycles everything needs to have a fast iteration cycle right community so the more feedback you can get the the quicker you can improve um those improvements all stack up so yeah it's been really great for us to have a constant stream of um yeah users and uh yeah feedback which has been really invaluable yeah, I completely agree. Um, you know, there's a, a, a big thing that a lot of, I think, Web2 projects, or not projects, I guess businesses, they'd call them, but um, for a long time, I feel like the large user bases just were, were not really like 
engaged with enough to get the proper feedback back. And then you just have like, at that point, just a business doing things and not like a balance of like, Hey, this is what the response is. And this is our response, which I think is important. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a great, it's a great process when you have so many people interested and you can put something out that engages them. And then when they engage with that thing, you can use that information to better the process for the users themselves. Um, it's a nice cycle. And, uh, yeah, it's really it's very fun to see the uh, the growth between different projects, especially using the platform. So I'm I'm glad you guys have had a a solid time with that there, and I'm excited to see you guys put out some more fun campaigns as well. Um, and, and yeah, and with that, you've you've done a wonderful job explaining mode and the I'd say an, an interesting route, honestly, from just saying all the best things versus the ways that you guys help in the space, um, which I think is really cool. And um, so my last question for you. We're just kind of be, do you have any final words for today for those listening um, anywhere you'd like to send them in particular um, or just anything you can let us know as we get into the end of the year? So I think um, maybe, I don't know, if I can think about, I can give you like a perspective of how I see things evolving and why I think mode is important in the landscape of, a lot of L2s um, and yeah, how I see us positioned in the market and what that means. <laughs> because I'm talking to a lot of, you know, potential investors, partners, and that's the thing we'll really dig into. So maybe it's interesting for everyone to listen in on. Um, so yeah, essentially like right now there's been, there's been an explosion of L2s um, and they will, they will continue to be right. Um, but there's also been like a shift where technology, um, and technical innovation, it's going to continue to be important, but it's not as important anymore as it was, um, you know, a few years ago. So we've seen, uh, like modularity become a big concept. So us building on the OP stack enables modularity. That means that, you know, mode can essentially um pull in different technology when it's ready when it's secure when it's been developed so for example zk technology we can pull in um we're going to work uh, using a different data availability layer so that's most likely going to be eigen layer we can um yeah you start using shared sequences or different types of uh, decentralized sequences when they're ready so as like and modular L2, I think you have like a considerable advantage over, you know, monolithic L2. So one that's built in a certain way and maybe not able to uh, adopt new technologies or integrate them so quickly. So that's one thing that I think has changed a lot, um, this idea of modularity. Another thing is that now the, the main competition, right, is not going to be on, you know, we're faster, we're more scalable, because like we've heard that now quite a few times, right? Of course. This is a, every chain tells you they're the most far, they're the fastest, they're the most scalable. Um, the challenge is going to be very much more on like the ecosystem building, uh, the go-to-market strategy, the brand building, um, and also the the strategy around like the types of applications that you can bring onto your chain that suit your your technology stack. Um, but also suit like the types of users uh, you're going to try and onboard. So if you're going to try and onboard like, uh, I don't know, say more retail user base, you should probably focus in on uh, consumer applications, right? Um, if you're going to try and, uh, I don't know, bring on board enterprises, then you're probably going to focus on financial applications and you really have to think through like how uh, you structure like that. So you have to think all about the user that's at the very end. For, for us as a network, we've still got to think about the user that's pretty far away. Of course. And we've got to move backwards and go, okay, so what does the application layer look like that makes that user want to be on mode? Um, how are those applications branded? How do they feel when you use them? Are they more fun? Are they more corporate? Um, what's like the vibe there and then you know how can we support those developers to uh build those things out on the network so 
it's going to be fun to see how all these L2s develop and um, where they kind of like try to get their niche. Uh, so yeah, those are just some, yeah. some more, yeah. Well, I think that's a really interesting perspective. Honestly, I, I, I don't hear it said a lot, honestly. Um, and like, yeah, like I, I do, I've, trust me, I've, I've done like, a, a, I've done so many AMAs at this point <laughs> and joined in on calls and, um, I get it's it's funny. Yeah, I, I get a very interesting perspective seeing a lot of and it's yeah, it's not, and obviously it's not that I think it's a bad thing that you know everybody does want to be <clears throat> apologies, the most scalable, the fastest, etc. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's necessarily bad, but I think that um if everybody's like trying to rush through one door and then there's another open door to the left, it's like why not while everyone yeah you know take the easier yeah the better path so um yeah i think that we definitely people will need to align their thoughts in the in, in those processes that you mentioned especially when it comes to the user itself and uh, those side of things and then because yeah they'll hit a point where we can only be so fast and and so scale it's so scalable right um i agree and it's definitely and it it's a a future thought for sure i feel like there could be a whole <laughs> uh ama just based on that discussion so um, appreciate that line of thought to end the day. Very interesting. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun challenge. I mean, luckily for us, we're we're a team of like growth experts, um, so I think it's gonna be a fun it's gonna be a fun challenge. Like we're very much the underdog right now, you know. Mm -hmm. um, we've been uh, yeah, we haven't raised a huge VC round. We're trying to be much more community focused. Um, we uh yeah we're going up against like well we were to be honest we are we are working alongside like uh the op stack chain so we're working very much alongside optimism um based yeah. those but you know we're still going up against a number of l2s that have like billion dollar valuations um so yeah i think we have a pretty a pretty good shot of beating them so that's the that's the goal for the next few months okay i, lo I love the passion i think that's a a wonderful way to to put it i mean you know there's so many different factors and variables um you know obviously funding is is a big factor from time to time but i feel mm -hmm. like at the end of the day it's just you know if, if you know what you need to do and you know what you need to get done and you have you know these things that you guys want to follow and, and believe in right that you think will get you above then i think you'll get there for sure uh, i can definitely feel the passion honestly um it, an interesting perspective that is not too often put forward. So thank you for that. I appreciate um, you taking the time to hop on with us today and uh, chat with us and give us that intro to mode and, you know, what makes you guys stand out and special. So. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I'm uh, yeah, super excited to keep, to continue working together. Um, and uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. So uh, thanks. Thanks everyone for, for jumping on. Thank you. I appreciate it too. I'm, I'm glad we get the chance to work with you guys as well. Looking forward to the future campaigns that come out. Um, we'll definitely be ending here today, guys. I want to appreciate you all for listening. Go check out um, Mode's Twitter, Discord, everything. Um, I linked below, like I mentioned earlier, the latest campaign. Stay tuned for a fun next four weeks and a fun final quarter. Thanks again, James. It was really awesome chatting with you. Very fun discussion. Uh, appreciate you joining. And um, hope everyone has a great uh, evening, afternoon, or morning, wherever you are in the world. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thanks again. See you guys. Bye-bye.